even though the M1 MacBook Pro was released in 2021, it is still a very powerful laptop in 2024. It brings great portability and a sleek design, but the updated design in 2021 still gives you that modern feel since a lot of newer Apple products are following suit. And since we're on the M3 editions, you can find great sales, discounts, and used versions of the M1 MacBook Pro. So it makes you wonder, should you recommend this laptop? Well, let's go ahead and find out on today's video as I tell you if the M1 MacBook Pro is worth it in 2021. Very quickly, we'll go over the specifications of my laptop. I have the base model M1 Pro, so it comes with 8 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, depending on the model and the customizations, you can configure this up to a 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU, up to 64 gigabytes of memory, and 8 terabytes of storage. The M1 MacBook Pro in 2021 also brought back the MagSafe port. You get two Thunderbolt four ports, a headphone jack, and on the other side, you get an HDMI port and other Thunderbolt four port and an SD card slot. So for casual use, this blows pretty much anything out of the water in the current price range if you count the discounts and sales and everything that are going on with this laptop. Jumping over to the display, let me just say it is still beautiful. You have a liquid retina XDR display. Again, mine is the 14 inch base model. So you get a resolution of 3024 by 1964, 254 pixels per inch. XDR stands for extreme dynamic range. You're getting 500 nits with SDR brightness, 1600 nits with HDR content. It isn't exactly OLED, but it still gets the job done. And I think it's wonderful for photo editing, video editing, the color colors are super vibrant and it gives you what I would think you would want in a laptop display. Not to mention it did bring the ProMotion technology for refresh rates up to 120 hertz. Now specifically there's certain things that I can see done that are still under 120 hertz but when you do see that it's beautiful and it flows extremely well and it's super smooth and honestly it's probably one of the best laptop screens that i've used ever watching movies is amazing watching youtube videos at 4k watching any hdr content yeah this display gets all of that done and again if you're a professional user like myself it still gets the job done for all your work needs but if you're a casual user and you want to just use netflix and any other streaming services on here it is yeah <laughs> not much to say there as i mentioned you can configure this up to 10 core cpu and a 32 core gpu but that's with the max version with this base pro model eight cores and it's not the most powerful laptop on the market and it's definitely not the most powerful computer on the market when you take into account the actual specs but since apple is just very optimized when it comes to a lot of the mainstream products that they're pretty much marketing you towards adobe i've even found works better on mac than it does on windows i have both even one of my friends who i work with and work for he even mentioned the same thing that Adobe just works better on Mac than it does on PC. This is kind of a common trend I've seen amongst creators and they brought this up. Not to say Adobe is perfect, I still have my issues with it on Mac, but it just works better. Same with other programs that I've used in the past, it's just well optimized. And I also believe, if I'm wrong, correct me down below in the comment sections, when it comes to the RAM, they also kind of break in a little bit into the storage and they help kind of run certain things if you're, you know, overusing the RAM, if you're bottlenecking, stuff like that. So I think that also, you know, just helps programs run quicker, smoother as well. I don't know if that's necessarily the best though to constantly do that. So if you want, you need to always up your RAM if you're gonna be using a lot of programs like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom. If you're gonna have all of those open alongside 40 Chrome tabs, alongside Spotify or Apple Music, you're definitely gonna wanna up the RAM, but at least for me, I usually only have one Adobe product open at once alongside maybe Chrome, Spotify, and that more than enough gets the job done. 4K video, I've edited full time for my company on this laptop all last year. So it's done what I've needed to do and it still outperforms, at least for my needs as of right now. I don't have to say it, right? I mean, I don't game on this. <laughs> uh, gaming PC, PS5 takes care of those needs, but I don't think most people who buy this are gonna be gaming, especially when you can spend a thousand bucks and get a gaming PC that can probably take care of those needs. But uh, for this, you know, workflow, everything, the power is there. And this isn't even discussing other programs that are probably optimized better for the Mac, which is like, you know, DaVinci Resolve most likely, and definitely Final Cut Pro. I've used Final Cut Pro a couple of times on here, but not enough to give you like a full-fledged review on how that works with Mac. But from what I did, it was chopping up 4K video pretty, 
seamlessly same with adobe so jumping over to the trackpad and the keyboard works flawlessly ever since the first day i got it a couple of years ago it still handles everything i love typing on it i love doing my scripts on this computer i love doing my tags descriptions for youtube uh, when it comes to the trackpad it's i think the perfect size the gestures are phenomenal i got used to them very quickly because i used to be a pc person only windows guy for a long time windows 7 8 10 so jumping over to this i it was a breeze to get into it, to get into the whole workflow. I love the three finger swipes, the gestures, opening different apps, going into different stuff like that. I, I got real use of the workflow. Now, I didn't use the previous uh, MacBook editions, but I do think the keyboard was a little bit different from my understanding. I could be wrong, so try not to you know roast me on that, but I do think they were a little different. These are full height function keypads, and yeah, I just love it. You're not gonna get that same feel of like a mechanical keyboard like you do with the Keychron as an example. That's my actual desktop keyboard, but this still gets the job done, and I love typing on it. It's never a bad experience personally for myself. It is backlit though, not RGB. Now the speakers on this are phenomenal. The audio constantly blows me away. I love listening to music on this. You have a high fidelity six speaker sound system. There's support for spatial audio when you're playing music and Dolby Atmos support when you're watching films that support it. Now, I don't have to say much. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a clip here and just let you listen to the music on this device. Oh, yeah. Love listening to the audios when I'm watching movies on this, especially if they're like bought on Apple TV, like I usually do buy my stuff on there because that does come with full HDR support, full Dolby Atmos, so it's always a good experience. Now the mics on the laptop are labeled as I believe Studio Quality 3 Mic Array, so I, I don't really use it. I've never used the mics on my laptop, even when I'm FaceTiming or even when I'm, you know, like on Discord, I'm always using another microphone. I'm using my AirPods, using headphones. Like I've never used the mic on here. From what I've heard from like random times that I accidentally may have like recorded with it without switching to my different audio systems, it sounded okay. I mean, I'm sure if you really don't have the money for even like a 30 or $40 microphone on Amazon, it'll get the job done if you're trying to make content with it, but it's not something I've ever used. So I can't really comment on it too much. The specs advertise a 70 watt hour lithium battery up to 11 hours of wireless web up to 17 hours of apple tv movie playback now i haven't watched apple tv for 17 hours straight on here but what i have done is constantly used it for photoshop Lightroom, had youtube spotify playing and that easily got me through two days worth of use obviously the second day towards the end of it you're looking at about like 20 percent maybe less but that's what i can get to without charging it i don't really recommend doing that though like letting it get down to like one percent <laughs> and then charging it all the way back up to 100 look up battery cycles and stuff like that and how to you know properly use your battery and to charge it the proper way uh if you're really taking it seriously and you're not just like casually using it but i've gotten what i've needed to get done with this on a full day's use like like scripting recording and then editing the video and i've always had a, a good experience with it just a side note though the 14 inch 8 core one does come with a 67 watt USB-C power adapter for the MagSafe, but if you up it and you configure it to higher specs, it comes with 96 watts. Ultimately, I know this was a pretty quick video, but this has been my experience having the MacBook Pro M1 for a little over two years now, and it was released in 2021, and I still think it's definitely worth it in 2024. If you can find a good deal on it, cop it, man. I've been seeing it on eBay for like a thousand bucks, and at that price, it's probably one of the best laptops I fear. But Anyways, if you like this video, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe, but let me know what else you want me to check out and possibly review. I do want to drop a Sony ZV-1F review, which is the camera that I'm recording on right now. But anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time.